Hello, beautiful people. It's your girl, Crystal with the K. I hope everybody is doing well. Just wanted to come and have a little chat about triggers. Last Saturday, I received some devastating news. My little brother's best friend was killed. And I tell you, it, it hurt me to my heart because it was like getting the news of when my little brother was killed. And the last time that I seen his best friend was at my little brother's service. You know, so just to receive this news, I just, it was, it just triggered all over again, open wounds. I mean, I just cried and cried and prayed. And, you know, I talked it out with a few friends and did a little journaling, which, you know, kind of helped. Um, but it just helped me to realize, you know, those triggers are going to come you know, as we are going through this journey of grief, um, that they could come at any time as well. And anything can trigger. Um, I think about music, you know, certain songs that you know the person liked, um, certain smells and scents, foods, places that you visit with them, um, pictures, watching home videos, holidays, anniversaries, birthdays, um, certain people. You know, I know of, of one situation um, that the deceased was friends with the same person and one of the people couldn't be around that person because it reminded them of the deceased. And so they had to distance themselves until they could come together, you know, and, and just be around each other. Um, you know, I think about for myself, I go food shopping and the particular store I go to, they love the Motown music, you know, the oldie but goodies. And my mom loved the oldies but goodies. I mean, Sam Cooke, Al Green, Marvin Gaye, Smokey Robinson, Aretha, she loved them. And I go into the store and they are always playing Oldie But Goodies. And so um, what usually happens is I usually just go to another location um, because when I'm there, I'm hearing this music and it reminds me of my mom, you know, and then I get sad and I start crying and I'm just like, I have to get out of the store as quick as possible because being right there brought that, hearing that music brought that memory and I can't share that memory with her. You know, I can't dance around with her anymore when one of her favorite songs comes on. Um, movies, movies is a, a big trigger for me. There's a lot of movies I don't watch anymore. Not only because some of them were my mom's favorite, but there were movies that I would watch all the time with my little brother growing all the, growing up. And we would love those movies. We would learn the lines in the movies. We would role play them out, you know, and I just, I can't watch them anymore. And also movies that have violence in them where someone is being killed, gunshots, things like that. Can't watch. They they trigger me and I start thinking about my little brother and I'm, you know, back in that space. Um, it's, it's hard. It's really hard with, you know, these triggers, they are a part of the grief um, journey. And for me, I try to um, deal with them, you know, go through them, something that I have learned and this grief journey is that you have to feel in order to heal. And something that someone had wrote was that those the people who talk about it more, about um, the loss of their loved ones and what they're feeling, those are the ones who tend to heal faster. So 
I just want to encourage you um, that when you are going through this grief journey, when you are dealing with these triggers, go through it, feel it, um, call somebody up, let them know, you know, yo, I'm having a moment. I just need to talk. I need you to come over and sit with me. Or can I come over and just sit with, you know, sit with you and we don't have to say anything, but I just kind of need somebody to be there with me, you know, right now. Um, it's just hard because today was his, his funeral and, and I kept going back and forth, you know, if I was going to go or not. And all week my sleep has been off. You know, I've been thinking about him and, you know, and I said, you know what, I'm going to go to this funeral because my little brother is not here anymore to attend his best friend's funeral. And so I would go in his behalf and be there to support the family and to encourage them just as he came to encourage me and my family when we lost my little brother. And I, you know, just glad, I'm glad that I went. It was hard, um, but just learning even more about the person that he was, how his family and his friends talked about him. You know, it brought a lot of tears to my eyes, but it also brought smiles because it sounded like they were talking about my little brother. And it just made me think, wow, this is why they were friends. You know, they had kind of like the same personality, the same characteristics. And so even though it was a time of mourning, there was also joy in the memories that were being shared, you know, um, and that's what we have to hold on to, you know, the memories. We don't have them here anymore, but we have the memories. We have stories to tell, you know, of our time with them. We have home videos, you know, I don't know if people still do that, but my mom was really big on home videos. And so we get to sit and, and watch those when we are able to handle it. Um, pictures, my mom was a big picture taker. And so we have pictures of us from little all the way up and, you know, birthday parties and, and things like that. And so that really, really helped. So I just want to encourage you that whenever you are having a moment, um, do whatever you need to do to take care of you because these triggers are going to come. They are part of this grieving process and only God knows how long, you know, um, each person is going to be going through this grief journey because it, we deal with it differently. Everybody copes differently. Um, some people, they grieve immediately. Some people have a delayed grief. And so it's just different for everybody. And so just be patient with yourself and allow yourself to feel, allow yourself to cry, allow yourself to go through, um, these triggers and things and allow yourself to have a, a strong network of people around you that will also help you through um, these things. I say take care of yourself. And you know me, I'm always saying to take care of yourself, your well-being, your physical well-being, your mental well-being, your emotional well-being. Do whatever you need to do to take care of you. I just want to have a word of prayer at this time before I close out. Father God in heaven, I come humbly before you this evening, dear Lord, praying for everyone who is going through grief. Lord God, everyone who has lost a loved one, I just pray for them right now, Lord, for your comfort. Lord God, for your strength as they go through. Lord, for your peace that pass all understanding. I pray, Lord God, for you to just take them through this, Lord God. It's not easy. I pray you will put 
people in their pathway that would encourage them, that would pray over them, that would sit with them, that would laugh with them, and that would just allow them to talk about their loved ones as much as they need to, Lord God. Father, I thank you for being our example. I thank you for sending Jesus and showing us that even in the Garden of Gethsemane, Lord God, when he was down and he was discouraged, Lord, you sent the heavenly angels to encourage him, to pray with him, to strengthen him. I pray you would do the same, Lord God, for all those who are grieving and mourning at this time, Lord God. Thank you for being a wonderful God. Thank you for being a faithful God. Thank you that even though we have to go through grief and loss in this world, it won't last forever, Lord. This is the pastor reminded us today at the service. Um, that in John 14, um, verse 1 through 6, where you talk about you've gone to prepare a place for us, and where you go, there we may be also. Because in your Father's house are many mansions. And if it were not so, you would have told us. But you are God of truth. And what you say stands, stands the test of time. And so, Lord, I pray that through this grieving process, you will stand with us, you will keep us, you will strengthen us, Lord God. And I pray that we would do the same for each other because we need each other. Lord, please help us, I pray in the name of Jesus, that we would do everything that we need to do in order to take care of ourselves. Thank you. We praise you. We love you. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you all for watching and tuning in. And I pray that you would take care of yourselves until the next video. Remember, God loves you and so do I. Take care and God bless.